Welcome back to the Ark Survival Guide. This is the next episode in our Let's Play Crystal Isles series, and we're gonna do a lot of stuff today. We've had some very stressful tames in the last couple of episodes, and if you missed those, definitely go back and watch those. They were pretty intense. So our main goal for this episode is to build all the stuff we need for an entire base and then fly all of it all the way across the whole Crystal Isles map, which usually would be an absolutely crazy idea, but we've been gearing up for this for the entire series, and we're gonna show you how to make it really easy to do that. Now, we've had some people asking how we get our resources so fast, so we'll show you in just a couple of minutes how to gather all the materials you need for an entire stone base, and we'll teach you guys some really effective tricks along the way. We're also gonna give you like a two minute crash course on how to use a fabricator and how to craft electronics because we'll be putting some of that in our new base and it'll be much faster to craft it here before we head out all the way across the map. And once we've got everything together, we are going to load it all up on our flyers, and I'll show you a trick that lets you stay airborne forever, and we can fly across the entire Crystal Isles map without ever touching the ground. So we'll show you a quick tour of the whole Crystal Isles, all the way from the White Shoals, across the whole map, up into the floating islands. And then we're going to show you guys the most epic, amazing base location in the entire Crystal Isles, probably all of Ark. And I'll give you a quick tour around this cave when we get there and show you why it's such an incredible place to live. And at the end of this video, I'll give you guys a chance to vote in the comments and decide what we're going to do in the next episode. So even though this episode will be much more relaxed than the last couple episodes, it'll still be pretty fun and I'm sure you'll learn a ton of really helpful stuff. So if you enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to this channel and ring that bell to enable all notifications, and let's get started. So we're going to build an epic base in the floating islands, but since we have all this really good resources and dinos right here, we're going to build all the structures before we take off and carry it all ready to build all the way up to the floating islands. And the first thing I'm doing right now is grabbing tons of thatch using our moss chops. And because we've had him since like level 10 and put nothing but melee damage into his stats, now that he's like level 80, he gets tons of thatch, like ridiculous amounts. And uh, like 30 seconds later, we have like 300 thatch, and we're loading all of this up on our Tapehara. Because this guy is like a parasaur, he's got pretty good weight, and he can fly, which makes it really easy to move stuff around. And that's going to come in handy in this next part. So we're going to be building a ton of stone structures, and the main components of those are thatch, wood, and stone. We've already got a ton of thatch loaded up on our Tapehara, and now we brought our Dodicarus and Beaver over to this spot, which has a better concentration of stone and wood. There's actually a ton of it all over this mountain. And we're using the Dodicarus to harvest all the stone because he has crazy high melee damage and he's got really, really good stone gathering abilities. Dodicarus also reduced the weight of stone. So you can carry like, I think four times as much stone as they should be able to. Almost hit that. Okay, tail is a little shorter than I thought. Anyway, uh, so Dodicarus are amazing at gathering stuff, and that's why we risked our lives and lost our really cool tech raptor in order to get these Dodicarus, because the rest of our game is going to be so much easier having basically unlimited stone. You guys see this rock? It's just floating, and I cannot have that. I, I could probably stop gathering at this point, but, I mean, come on, get out of here, stone. You can't just float like that. That's better. All right, nobody breaks the laws of physics while I'm around. So now that we've got tons of stone, and actually Dodicarus are really good at gathering thatch too, I just got more from our moss chops because he's even better at it. So now we're going to use this beaver, and I've already got some wood on his inventory, but we're going to get way more. So you can see here, it takes like two seconds to knock over a tree, and you get like two or three hundred wood every time. And we've been boosting its melee damage, which increases the amount you harvest. And as you can see here, we are already overloaded. And uh, we have been using this beaver without even having a saddle on it for basically this whole game, because if you park them next to a tree, a couple seconds later, they'll just chop it down and get all the wood, even if nobody's riding them. But now now that we have a saddle, we finally hit level 61 to where we could do that. We can just mow down a whole forest in just minutes. So we've been gathering for I think 
less than two minutes now, and you can see how much stuff we've got. Now this is on vanilla settings, no boosted gathering rates or anything. These dinos are just so good at gathering this stuff, it goes that quickly. So we're going to start by making a bunch of triangle stone foundations. This will actually be a lot of our base will be made out of triangles, so it's going to be much more interesting than our usual base patterns. I'm going to try to be a little bit more creative. I've already designed this whole base, and it's actually going to look pretty cool, I think. So I'm looking forward to it, but we're going to make a modular design. So it'll be uh, building in stages throughout this series until we have a full size castle. So uh, I parked all the dinos next to each other, so I don't have to move, but I can reach all of their inventory. And the reason for that is all these materials are so heavy, I can't even think about moving right now. But we are just crafting and crafting nonstop, and I'm just grabbing all the materials into my inventory from each one as we're starting to run low on other ones. And I think we should have enough for like 20 or 30 of these foundations just in two minutes of gathering. And we're also getting tons of experience. Like if you get an explorer note, which is like doubles your experience, I think, for 10 minutes, and then you do what I'm doing right now, you'll gain a ton of levels in no time. But uh, we'll keep crafting all the materials we need and we'll come back when we've got them all ready. So a lot of people have asked me what this fabricator is and how to use a fabricator and all this stuff. Now I've got full guides which I'll link in the description to tell you everything you need to know about a fabricator, an electrical system, all that good stuff. But for starters I'll give you a one minute crash course. So it's fueled by gasoline first of all, just like a fire is fueled by wood. And we have to put some oil and hide into the forge, light that up and wait a little while and that will convert it into gasoline. Now there's a button in the middle that says turn on or you can hit the E key or action key when you're facing it just like a fire and as long as it's got gasoline in its inventory those little lights will light up and it turns on it also makes a lot of noise so if you got your sound on you'll know it's running now when it's running it'll actually light up these little engrams inside the menu and you can actually craft stuff like polymer electronics and all that good stuff and everything that you learn once you learn the engrams for these things, they'll actually show up in these folders. And uh, one thing to remember is there's one folder for electric and one folder for electrical, and it's depending on whether they're structures or things like cables and components and stuff. Now we'll show you how to set up the electric system when we actually build our base, but uh, we've got a lot of really good guides on how to make an electric system, how to use a fabricator, how to get gasoline, and uh, basically everything you need to know to uh, use this fabricator and electric system. So if you're not familiar with any of those things, check the links in the description and watch those full guides. They'll be much more helpful than our one minute crash course. Course. But I'll finish up building a few more things and then we'll fly all the way across the Crystal Isles map to our new beautiful home. Okay, so I've selected my three least favorite, most expendable pteranodons, and uh, now you'll see why I've been breeding so many of them. We're going to take all these pteranodons all the way across the map, and uh, they're going to help us carry all the stuff, which is way too heavy for one flyer to carry. So uh, i got to get these guys under control, get a little bit more follow distance so they're not like in my face this whole trip. And we're going to use a really cool trick with the Tapehara, and I'll kind of explain that as we go. So a Tapehara has three seats on its saddle, and if you are riding the front passenger seat, you can sit on the Tapehara without actually flying it. Technically, according to the game, nobody is flying it, and that's where the beauty of this trick comes in. Now we have the Tapehara on follow, and we have to make sure he's up in the air, and then we select his options and hit board passenger seat. So options, passenger seat, board front seat, and that'll get us into his saddle on the front front seat. Then we have to immediately whistle for him to move up into the air, otherwise he immediately lands. And if we do it fast enough, and he's already airborne when we hop on the seat, he will actually fly up into the air. Now it's a little tricky and takes some practice, but if a Tapehara is on the ground, it will never take off and fly if somebody's in the front seat saddle. But if you've got it following you and it's already hovering in the air, you can totally pull it off. Just make sure you take off really quickly before it actually 
actually lands on the ground. Otherwise, you're back on the ground again. So we're going to keep whistling forward, and it will keep flying to the next spot we tell it to go to. And because technically, according to the game, nobody is actually riding any of these flyers, none of them lose any stamina, and they can all fly with infinite stamina all the way across the map. The only downside is it's a slow process, so we'll be skipping ahead a little bit until we get to the jungle plateau where I want to drop some stuff off, and then we'll take you on a sightseeing tour all the way across to the floating islands. So here we are finally at the plateau, and if you look to the left in the distance, there is a white wyvern, which might be an alpha flying around down there. And this is exactly why we built up on the very highest plateau, because that's the least likely place for one of those wyverns to finally go. So now we've whistled for this guy to land, and once again, he doesn't do anything unless we actually whistle if we're not riding him. But we made it safely here with all three of our pteranodons, and real quick, I'm actually going to drop some stuff off. So I need to unselect the uh, Tapehara as these group on the whistle commands. And by the way, I almost forgot, you have to set him on his own whistle group while you're doing this trick. Otherwise, all of your other dinos will follow you when you whistle. And usually you don't want that. So I selected this Pteranodon, and he is actually going to live in this jungle outpost now, because there's a lot of really good resources like the obsidian and the chitin from those ant hills that we can collect really easily. And now that we've got cryopods, I can just put this Pteranodon in a cryopod. We've got some extra Pteranodon saddles, and he's just going to live in the storage box. We can fast travel using the bed that I brought, and then we can just grab all the stuff we need. We'll leave some tools and things like that in in here and uh, I might be able to actually carry the saddle and this obsidian that I couldn't carry before and we're just gonna drop off a bed up here and this little tiny house is just enough space for a bed and a storage box but that's really all we need on this plateau I also won't be super sad if a wyvern does come up here and destroy the whole thing so we're gonna rename this and this is gonna be called E just kidding uh, this will be our jungle outpost and there we go so now we have our nice little stone outpost we'll leave some tools here in case I need to use some metal tools and this way we can just fast travel here anytime we want to come back to the jungle and we got a flyer to carry us around so now that this jungle outpost is all sorted we will get everybody back in order get back airborne and we will start flying to our brand new home Alright, so we are airborne again, and we're going to make a non-stop flight all the way to the floating islands in our new home. And uh, I'll be your tour guide here, and we're going to play the video in double speed, just because it's going to take forever to get there if we don't. The, uh... Good news about this trick is it makes it so you never have to stop and you can just fly all the way, but the bad news is you can't sprint and uh, it takes a lot longer. You fly a lot slower while you're doing this. So uh, anyway, we'll give you guys a little tour as we go. So along the right hand side here, you can see this desert area on the very corner of the screen. And uh, that's where the wyvern trench is. It's like a cave inside the desert area. It's huge. You can steal wyvern eggs there, but uh, they're pretty vicious. On the far left, we've got the Redwoods and uh, this kind of savanna like Middle Eastern feel area down here in front of me is actually uh, really dangerous. It's covered in things like T-Rexes. Uh, there's actually quite a few basilisks that will spawn in that area and uh, lots of other really deadly stuff everywhere. So I don't really recommend going there without a flyer because it's pretty nasty. And uh, this area right here in the middle of my screen is the Copper Hills these uh, kind of reddish brown trees and that actually is one of the best places to get metal and obsidian on the whole Crystal Isles map but as usual with places with lots of metal and obsidian it's deadly as anything there are tyrannosaurs everywhere lots of alphas like everywhere you look you'll get mobbed by something now uh, all around the copper hills over there there's lots of ankylosaurs it's actually a great place to grab those if you can survive and uh, there's lots of argents too 
I was originally thinking of getting an Ankylosaur and an Argent out in the Copper Hills, but uh, I think we're going to have a better chance up in the Floating Islands. So uh, it's finally turning nighttime, and it's turning that really fast because, uh, you know, we're playing this in double speed. But look how beautiful this is at night. Like, I love that whole volcano area just at nighttime lit up with all the crystals glowing. Pretty awesome looking. Now, up here on the left-hand side, you'll see this river. And uh, this whole river, I forgot to bring a snack, but I've got just enough water to uh, stay alive. This river here on my left is actually another good place to grab ankylosaurs. They like to, uh, you know, show up on the left-hand bank there. But, you know, you get lots of dangerous, deadly stuff all around. But this place that I'm floating over right here, you can kind of see some of these metal nodes. But uh, right at the base of this waterfall, at the front of this mountain, is a river that is just covered in metal. Like, everywhere you go, tons of metal. I'm also having to turn around a little bit just to make sure my pteranodons are still with me. And uh, I've still got the two that I brought with me. I left one at the jungle, but uh, we'll get there eventually. And uh, this whole area on the left is kind of a big plains area. There's a lot of open space, a lot of big deadly dinos. But uh, it's another good spot to look for ankylosaurs on the other side of this river because you see a bunch of them out on that little peninsula that sticks out there. And we're going to start flying into the uh, Ember Valley, which is actually a really cool place. There's uh, all these red trees everywhere. It looks like it's autumn, mostly because everything's on fire. Uh, you can actually hack down a lot of these like burned trees and um, you know you can get lots of charcoal from the trees there's lots of obsidian everywhere and once again lots of deadly stuff that will eat your face so we're going to give plenty of space on these mountains because there's actually a lot of argents that fly around here and uh, they come up pretty high when they're flying so we really don't want to run into that because each one of these pteranodons is carrying a ton of really valuable stuff and uh, they won't hold up very much after an Argent attacks like we can't outrun them this way which is another downside to using this trick but uh, you can stay so high up in the air that nothing can even bother you which is pretty great so uh, we're gonna be coming up on a spot over here which is actually pretty cool so kind of down at the bottom of this big lava waterfall straight out ahead you can see this little plateau and it's covered in trees but there's actually a waterfall that comes down from that flat plateau and it makes it a really nice spot for a base because it's really flat easy to build on it's pretty easy to uh, keep it safe there's only one ramp that leads up to that little mountain so I put that on my little uh, guide on all the best base locations on the Crystal Isles map, and I'll try to remember to put a link to it in the description. It's actually pretty helpful. There's a lot of really good things about this area, but if you want to get a ton of obsidian really easily, you can take a Ankylosaur and an Argent from that little plateau, fly them up to the top of the volcano, and just get piles of metal and obsidian from up there. And there's also a really good obsidian location right at the base of that, too. So, really good spot for obsidian but uh, we're going to be using a really nice trick when we get up to the floating islands to where we can use we can get so much organic polymer we're probably never even going to need to bother with obsidian oh yeah you can also kind of see some sparkles in the river and uh, it's actually got lots of silica pearls in the river on top of that waterfall so we're finally making some pretty good progress, and you're probably realizing why we're doing this in double speed, because uh, it's taken this long to fly across the map, even with double speed. So, uh, you know, you can only imagine if we were going normal. But uh, we still got our pteranodons, which is very helpful. And we're going to try to find a good spot where we can actually put down on one of these floating islands. We'll try to find a safe area, and uh, then we can actually fly normally. We'll be able to sprint and kind of have a little more control flying around. So that should definitely help things. So we're finally almost to the floating islands, and uh, I'll point out a couple things while we're flying closer, but later in the series we'll do a lot of really awesome stuff around this area, and I'll show you things in much closer up, much better detail. But uh, first of all, you see this little island right where I'm pointing with my uh, whistles, and this little clump of islands that's kind of in the middle here and uh, closest to the volcano, there's actually a lot of obsidian on those floating islands. 
and it's one of the best places to grab obsidian because if there's there's some right there so it's actually just littered all around these islands and there's usually not anything super dangerous but except for like argents and maybe some micro raptors gosh i hate those things but uh, for the most part you're going to find mostly things like raptors and stuff like that and you can just get them to chase you off a cliff and then you don't even have to bother fighting them and then you've got access to probably the safest and easiest obsidian that you can possibly grab on the Crystal Isles. The jungle spot is also a great spot for that, but uh, I think we're going to try to find a spot right around here where we can land, and uh, we'll be able to hop onto our flyer and actually fly the right way, and uh, we'll be a little bit more maneuverable. And we'll go back to normal game speed too, so I think we can probably land on this spot up here. Just going to double check, make sure nothing deadly is around, because there is some dangerous stuff, you know. There's a lot of Argents up in the floating islands, like everywhere you run into Argents. So up here I'm basically always watching the sky and listening for wings flapping, just to make sure there's not an Argent. It's going to surprise me somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to land and jump back on really fast, because you default to jumping in the actual passenger seat like you're supposed to ride it. So uh, here we go. And uh, I'm going to put down for just a second, because this does seem relatively safe, because I need to get a torch in my inventory, because we're actually going to be going into a cave, and I want to make sure we can see. So here we go. All right. So that seems like a relatively safe place. We'll probably come back here for some obsidian later, but uh, oh, check out that pteranodon. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to have major problems up here in the floating islands because I really like flyers, and there's going to be some awesome looking flyers. And oh, is that a microraptor? I think that's an Archaeopteryx. Okay, yeah, it is. So you'll also find Archaeopteryx out here, and those things are uh, one of the scariest dinos to me because they look so much like Microraptors, and they freak me out. Now, if you're not familiar with Microraptors, uh, you're lucky, but they will just, like, fly up, hit you, knock you off your mount, stun you. I mean, they are just bad news. I hate Microraptors so much. But uh, now that we actually are flying this thing the regular way, we're going to have to do our normal stopping for stamina. And I'm a little bit worried these pteranodons might be too close, because if uh, I get stuck on the pteranodons, we could be in big trouble. Okay, that was close. Now, there's actually some really cool little floating islands out here that you can live in. And, uh, you know, there's some pretty awesome spots all around here. Like, basically everything here is just beautiful. But uh, we're heading to a specific spot, which is my absolute favorite spot in all of Ark. And that's really saying something, because Ark has some breathtaking scenery, just some amazing base locations all over the place in all the different maps. But uh, of everything in Ark, I really think this is my absolute favorite base location. And I'm going to show you guys some really cool stuff that we can do. Like, there's just an amazing amount of things you can do with this particular spot. So many good resources that are pretty well hidden, but if you know where to look, you can find basically everything you need up in the sky. And the only reason I didn't start up here is because it's actually really hard to get here until you can use a flyer. And uh, we've just had so many things to do while we've been, uh, you know, flying around in the White Shoals. We finally are actually ready to head up here. So in the very middle of the biggest floating islands up here is this crystal formation that sticks out of the very top of the mountain. And there's a waterfall coming down from it that kind of cascades down into all these different pools. And this little valley here is just super cool in the first place. There's horses all around the ledges. Um, there's all kinds of stuff you can get and tame. There's bright orange horses. Hey, that's cool. Might have to grab one of those later. Um, these ruins to my left here that you can see is actually a really cool spot. You can take flyers into a cave in those ruins. And uh, there's lots Lots of silica pearls, a bunch of metal, there's glow tails, which are cool looking, um, just lots of good resources. Oh, and snails. I'm definitely going to grab some snails as soon as I've tamed an Argent, and we will be taming an Argent really soon. One of my first things I want to do up here is tame a really cool Argent. So we'll keep an eye out for some cool colors. I'm sure like with all the Argents up here, we'll find some really cool Argents around. And uh, we'll try to get a good level, but also look for some that look cool. I mean, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you prefer really cool looking pretty colored dinos or high level ones? Because we could really go for either one. 
But uh, this spot up here is really cool. So you've got two big waterfalls that kind of come down and a green Paraceratherium. That'll be cool. I, I don't really want to kill that. He's pretty cool looking. So uh, this waterfall goes down and you can see these orange crystals. And I'll show you that spot in the map. I'm so glad that my ghillie suit gloves finally aren't covering the map where we are. Whoa, look at that Argent. Okay, speaking of cool looking Argents, check it out. I love the colors on that. It's like a parrot. Okay, uh, I think that was a level 30 female. Uh, we might have to tame that really soon, like in the next episode. But first, let me, what is that? Okay, that's a moth. I gotta keep an eye out for cool stuff, but there are a lot of moths out here. All right, making sure my pteranodons are following me. So right at the bottom of this little spot that's got all these orange crystals, there is a cave, and check this out. This is such a cool location. So you get through the waterfall, and then there's all of this. There's tons of crystal and metal in here. There's actually lots of uh, stone, not a lot of trees. We'll have to go outside to chop down trees, but uh, look how beautiful this is. So before we wrap up this episode, let me show you why this place is so amazing. I mean, we'll be showing you that for the next several episodes because we're going to do a lot of really awesome tricks and show you some really cool resources and stuff you can tame around here. But uh, first of all, this whole place is just massive. It's like bigger than a football stadium and the cave just keeps going back really far. But there's only three entrances and each of those entrances can be blocked off by like one behemoth gateway and then the entire place is totally secure now some dangerous stuff can actually spawn outside the cave and then wander in like you might get unlucky and like an argent floats in someday or uh you know a carcanos can actually come down from the top i'll show you that in a minute but there's actually an entrance above the waterfall but for the most part, unless you're super unlucky, you probably won't get any creatures coming in this cave at all. And uh, there's metal all over the place, just everywhere you look, metal deposits. Uh, there's lots of crystal. These orange and white crystals are all harvestable. All the plants can be gathered for berries. And uh, that waterfall right there has a nice pool at the bottom, which you can use as a water source. At the very top of that waterfall, if you follow it all the way up to the ceiling, is a small cave entrance that gets you to the back of the island in the river. And there are crabs up there, so be careful. And in that water down there are actually lots of silica pearls that spawn, so you can get all the pearls you need just gathering that every time they respawn, as long as you don't build too close to that waterfall. And all over here is covered in stone. There's tons of little plants you can get berries from, so basically everywhere is just littered with resources. And if you keep going back further into the cave, there's even more metal deposits and lots more concentration. But uh, that was one entrance under that waterfall. The other entrance is above the other waterfall. And then way back into the cave to my left is another very small entrance. And it's really hard to find. But that one actually opens up into uh, the end of the island. And then you can just fly around out there. So we're going to be having lots of fun living here. And I think this spot that I'm hovering over, it's totally flat. And uh, we'll clear out some space and build a massive castle right Right there and uh, we'll show you that in the next couple episodes so before we wrap up this episode I want to ask your opinion because we've recorded enough gameplay for like the next three or four episodes I have been having way too much fun up in the Crystal Isles and uh, we're still editing those videos but I want to find out what you guys would like to watch next so we'll give you guys some straight-up spoilers of some of the next stuff we're gonna do now first of all we came up here to build a base and I've designed a full-on castle which is gonna look really cool I'm really excited about it, but it's going to take a lot of material, so we'll build it in stages, and uh, we're ready to start the first stage of just a big functional base we'll be using to tame a bunch of stuff. And uh, the next episode could be a let's build of the first section of our base, which is going to be pretty cool. But I know this episode has been pretty relaxing, and uh, I'm really happy to show you guys some much more intense tames, because we're going to do a lot of taming up here too. Now we've spotted a couple beautiful Argents. There's this blue one, an orange one, and uh, you know, I want your opinions on which one you want us to tame because uh, we're gonna be taming an Argent really soon. But even bigger spoiler alert, 
We're going to find a Quetzal up here, and that is something we cannot pass up, even though most of you guys are probably going to leave me comments and say, that's a really bad idea. There's no way you can pull off taming a Quetzal at your level with Trank arrows, not Trank darts. You really need Trank darts to tame a Quetzal. But we're going to try it anyway, because we're crazy, right? So if you want to see that in the next episode, and maybe we'll build the base after that, then I am totally happy to do that too. So let me know in the comments what you guys would prefer, and uh, you know, we'll see what we can do. And if there's anything else you want to see us tame that's up here that we haven't mentioned, let us know in the comments, because uh, honestly the hardest part is going to be not getting distracted and taming all the crazy cool stuff we see up here. But we love hearing from you and we love all the encouraging comments we've been getting lately. I so appreciate you guys and uh, you know, it has been so encouraging and such a huge support for our channel and it actually really helps our channel grow when you guys comment on the videos. You know, we've had uh, a lot of people recently have said, hey, your channel's so underrated, like I wish I could help you by donating monthly as a channel member and uh, you know, is there anything we can do to help? And honestly, just watching our videos, commenting on our videos, uh, sharing sharing them on social media. Even just liking our videos actually helps us a ton. And speaking of which, make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed already, and ring that bell to enable all notifications so you'll see when the next video comes out, which should be a whole lot of fun. So until next time, I hope you all stay safe, have fun, and we will see you really soon in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media so your friends can enjoy it too. And make sure you subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to enable all notifications because we have lots of awesome new guides, tips, tricks, live streams, and let's plays for ARK and other awesome games coming soon and you won't want to miss any of that. We already have lots more fun and helpful videos just like this one, so check out the links at the end of this video to keep watching. You can also chat with other gamers if you join our channel's Discord at the link in the description. If you want to earn great rewards while supporting this channel, click the join link next to the subscribe button for more information about our channel memberships. We want to give a big thank you to some of our biggest supporters of this channel, Sabo0283, Cole Parmenter, Emmy Fisher, Wolf Girl Be Like, Kelly Razjak, and Ashley Owens. Thank you all so much for everything you do to make this channel possible. So until next time, we hope you have fun on your own video game adventures, and we, we will, will see you in our, our next video. video.